today's bike of the day is an MKM 1000. And MKM stands for Michael Krauser Motorsports because this video is almost as much about an individual as it is about the bike that's in front of me. Michael Krauser was a German motorcycle racer who in the 50s had a lot of success with BMW Works' factory sidecar racing team. So clearly he was insane. Anyone who gets on a sidecar and races around is an absolute nut, but you gotta love watching him. So Krauser has a lot of success, eventually kind of ages out of racing, moves in from, race, like from riding to managing the team. And then from there, he uses his connections with the BMW factory to start a company that a lot of guys and girls know as Krauser Luggage. So if you're a big fan of 70s boxers and 80s BMWs and that kind of thing, uh, you've probably seen Krauser bags on a BMW. That is Michael Krauser himself. He was the brainchild behind that company. Fast forward a few years, Krauser Luggage is doing well. Michael has made some money for himself. He does what I think basically anybody watching this video would do if they had connections with the factory and a lot of supplemental money. He tried to build his own motorcycle. That was his dream and this was the result. Over a couple of years, between say 80 and 83 or so, they built 237 of these. Uh, but I think they're really fascinating for two main reasons. And I should mention that normally in a bike of the day video, I want to teach you a couple new things that are cool about a bike and then take it for a quick ride so you can hear what it's like and see what it's like in motion. Unfortunately on this one, we put it up on our, uh, you know, our auction, or not even on the auction page, but on social media and on our coming soon page for our members, someone saw it and had to snap it up. They wanted it immediately. So we technically no longer own this bike, so I will not be riding it, but they're just so hard to find and so rare that I still wanted to at least show it to you. And uh, if you've never heard of one, hopefully you learn a couple of cool things. So again, for me, there's two big things that I really uh, think are cool about this motorcycle. The first one is the frame, which is painted in this very vivid purple, but actually, sadly, kind of hidden. Uh, the majority of it is hidden by this, uh, by this bodywork. A lot of journalists call this frame the birdcage, and if you see a photo of what it looks like without bodywork on it, it's pretty clear to see why. The frame itself actually uses 52 straight pieces and four slightly, for, uh, slightly bent pieces of chromoly that were welded together in 150 different points. And so a stock BMW R100 frame from say the late, uh, early 80s, I should say, weighed about 38 pounds. This frame weighs 25, so it saves 13 pounds just in the frame alone. The way Krauser was able to do that was by partnering with a company called HPN. And so if you're a BMW nerd, you may be familiar with that acronym. It's a company that's also tight with BMW and over the years has built lots of specialty hot rod BMWs, especially GSs, off-road things, that kind of, that sort of contraption. So HPN and Krauser, they ended up in the early 70s using a computer for one of the first times to design a frame. So it's really, really high tech stuff for the time. And even though it took roughly 10 years for this bike to get to production, Again, this, the design for, especially that birdcage frame, came out in the early 70s. So like I said, pretty ahead of the time, very cool, and also visually striking with that, with that purple. The purple, of course, matches the middle color here in this stripe and in this bodywork, and that's the second cool thing I like about this. Uh, it's definitely got its own distinct style. I see a lot of parallels between what Krauser was doing and what Bimota would end up doing a few years later. Uh, you know, he's taking someone else's uh, engine and a few components here and there, we'll talk about them in just a second, but then creating their own frame, saving weight that way, uh, creating their own bodywork, that kind of thing. And much like Bomoda, you've got one big fairing up front, and then this one long piece here. Uh, underneath this, this is just a, a cover, there's an actual metal tank that's hidden underside here, and then you've got that very 70s slash 80s uh, colorways, and I like the way that Krauser uses negative space here to show off the MKM and then the 1000 of the logo. So I just mentioned, hey, Krauser's using a lot of BMW parts. Obviously he has that connection, but what's kind of shocking, not shocking, but what I guess really I notice when I look at this is how similar it is to an actual, a bike that I actually own. So let me wheel that out and we'll do a little side-by-side -side so you can see what I'm talking about. there you go. All right, this is my 1984 BMW R100 CS last edition. And I will do a separate video on this uh, because the last edition part of it actually is a pretty humorous uh, story in BMW's history, but we'll deal with that on another day. 
What I wanted to sh just show you is kind of the similarity of how he's just taken parts off the assembly line. I mean, you look at the engine, it's basically the same. The wheels, the da like the tack and the speedo, that's all the same. Uh, the exhaust is even the same. It's just uh, installed at a different angle. And a little bonus when I was talking about Krauser luggage, well, those are Krauser bags on that uh, old bike of mine. But there's a lot of pi uh, parts that are being shared here. Kind of like, I guess, with a Bimota, if you look at like a, a DB1 versus a Ducati 900SS or whatever it might be, like there's just parallels. Uh, but Krauser did a couple of things. So they take the engine out of there. Obviously they put it in their own frame. They actually cant it at a different angle, which is partly why the exhaust is at a different angle, but it also helps with ground clearance and corners in terms of uh, like the heads, how high they are off the ground so you can get more lean angle. Uh, they also, offered an optional set of heads. So the stock motor, uh, you can kind of see the heads look identical on both bikes. The stock motor uses two valve heads. Krauser developed four valve heads specifically for this bike, really distinctive style, kind of blocky, very 80s looking. And that bumped up power from 60 on the stock bike to 72, which was by far the fastest thing that BMW was making at the time. There was a trade-off though. So depending on who you talk to, some people feel like those four valve heads weren't just ready to slap on a production motor and go. Uh, some people felt like they were a, a little unfinished. They had to be taken to a race shop to get you know, uh, milled out and, uh, and have some finishing work done on the insides. So there are lots of stories of people uh, putting those heads on and then the motors breaking <laughs> and, and the heads going bad. So uh, I can understand a, a collector, a, a Krauser purist, or whatever you want to call it, might want to see those four valve heads on this. And it, they do get more value from a, from a sales standpoint when they have those heads. But if you're like me and you want to ride your, your collector bike or special bike, I mean, that, that BMW of mine has 89,000 miles on it. If you want to put that kind of mileage on one of these, then you're probably going to want to have the stock two valve heads on it. Anyway, unfortunately, like I said, this bike's already been sold. So uh, I believe the new owner is planning on doing a restoration of sorts on the bike, which is gonna be nice. He's quite the Krauser enthusiast himself. He's taught me a few things. It's been really nice to converse with him about it. He's got uh, OEM sets of these decals and even fiberglass molds and things like that. So I'm really excited to see what he does with it. Um, normally I tell you the details on it and when it's gonna go up for auction. This one's already sold, but like I said, it's a rare bike. It's the first one that we've seen here in person at Iconic Motorbikes, so we have sold a couple in the past. And so while I was here, I just wanted to show it off and uh, hopefully you learned a couple of things. If you have any questions about Krausers, about my weird old BMW, or anything here at Iconic Motorbikes, let me know in the comments, and thanks for watching.